the other end, no one answered. He dialed his brother's number several times. But it was all in vain. Zeneca listened to the long beeps on the phone for a while. In principle, it was expected. For several years. The brothers hadn't communicated with each other. And there was a very serious reason for that. Three years ago, Jenny had taken Ilya's girlfriend. Well, taken might not be the right word. He didn't intend for that to happen. But life is like that sometimes. Lyra had been dating Ilya for half a year. Zeneca teased his brother all the time. Saying, you'll introduce us to your bride soon. Right? Six months is quite a long time for Ilya. Given that he hasn't dated anyone for more than two or three weeks before. It was clear that Ilya had fallen in love for real. And he even mentioned marriage. Are you planning to marry her if she agrees? Zeneca asked. Without hesitation, Ilya replied. But then it's time for the bride to meet the groom's family. Bring your Lyra over for a visit on Sunday. And our mother will prepare a festive dinner. That's how they agreed. On a Sunday, Lyra entered the Porakak household. And Zeneca was utterly captivated by her beauty. He fell head over heels in love with his brother's bride at first sight. He never showed this to anyone. But later, it turned out their feelings were mutual. They resisted it for a long time. But life and nature took their course. And Zeneca and Lyra got married. Since then, the brothers stopped talking. Zeneca understood that he was guilty before Ilya. So he gave him time to forgive both himself and Lyra. He thought that time would heal everything. And sooner or later, things would get better. Their mother was also deeply concerned. I'm waiting for my sons, she said. She tried to talk to Ilya, but he drew a firm line. Saying he would never forgive him. So she stopped interfering. Still, she didn't lose hope. She believed that love could happen again. And they would all fall into place. Two more years passed with Seneca. And Lyra waiting for their firstborn. However, fate had other plans. They were involved in a serious accident on the highway. And Zeneca lost everything, his wife. And even their unborn child. This forever divided his life into before and after. Lyra's death exacerbated the already strained relationship between the brothers. Ilya now blames Zeneca not only for his marriage but also for Lyra's death. Living with this burden became unbearable. After Lyra's funeral, Zeneca became completely absorbed in his grief. He spent his days locked in his room. Slowly flipping through an album. Tears often streaming down his face. He stopped leaving the house and abandoned his once successful business. Enough torturing yourself. It won't make it any easier, his mother gently tried to reason with him. You don't understand, mom. I miss her and our child so much. I can't stop thinking about them, he replied. Clutching the album even tighter. He didn't have the strength to argue with his mother. The unbearable longing for his deceased wife consumed all his energy. A whole year passed since Lyra's death. But even that time wasn't enough for him to recover. Please, call Ilya for me. I need to meet him urgently. He probably won't want to listen to me. But I really need to see him tomorrow evening, Zeneca told his mother. She was worried and surprised, asking. What are you planning? But before it's too late. I want to pass my business to him. It's good, it's the right thing to do. Maybe now your relationship will improve. And what is there left to divide between us? The brothers had a long conversation. And eventually, Ilya agreed to take on the responsibility. No matter how cold their relationship was. They were still brothers who had each other's backs. They decided that while Zeneca would live in the village, away from the city, Ilya would manage the business and send him a portion of the profits, keeping the rest for himself. Two weeks later, Zeneca was already settling into his new place. 
a house he had built for his family. However, they hadn't even had a chance to live in it for a day. So it stood empty and unheated for three years. This small but cozy house was located on the edge of a small village. Near a forest where nobody could distract Seneca from his calm and peaceful life. The house needed a bit of repair and improvement. And over the course of several months of his solitary village life, Zeneca grew to like it. He didn't need a lot of money here. So he used his extra savings to fix up the house. He had plenty of free time as well. So it became his peculiar hobby. He also befriended his neighbor. An amusing man nicknamed Vanya Kvana. Although his real name was Ivan Denisevich. This neighbor worked as a forester and lived alone. Having been widowed for a long time. He was the only one who could understand. What was going on in Zeneca's soul. They met often and. Talked about everything under the sun. The forester, Ivan Denisevich. Even started taking Zeneca with him on his forest rounds. Teaching him about forestry. Zeneca seemed to have a natural aptitude for it. And he began to wonder if this was his true calling. Daily and long hikes left him exhausted, but he felt content. He began to appreciate the forest just as much as Ivan did. During one of their trips, they came across a trapped she-wolf. Ivan Denisevich knew exactly what to do and how to help in such situations. He had helped forest animals in difficult situations before. But this time, it was complicated by the fact that the she-wolf was pregnant. With Ivan's guidance, they managed to free the grey predator from the deadly trap. Lucky her, Ivan Denisevich said. Her paw is hardly injured. It will heal in no time. And now, we've come just in time for her. Otherwise, she would have died. But now, her cubs will be born. And she'll raise them. You've done a good deed today, Yevgeny. It's moments like these that make me feel good. It means the day wasn't wasted. About a year passed since that event. And one seemingly ordinary night. Zeneca was awakened by the loud howl of a wolf. He tossed and turned, trying to fall back asleep. But the howl was so haunting that. It stirred an inexplicable sense of melancholy within him. It was as if the wolf was summoning heavenly forces for help. Why is it crying like that, he wondered. But soon, through the howl, he distinctly heard a woman's cry. Help! Zeneca couldn't believe his ears. He listened carefully, and the cry repeated. It wasn't his imagination. He immediately grabbed a flashlight, rushed out of the house and realized that the cries were coming from the direction of the forest. During his time in the village, Zeneca had become quite familiar with the forest. So he hurried to help without hesitation. After a while, he found the source of the cries. It was a young woman, and it was clear that she was in labor. She was alone and desperately needed assistance. Without a second thought, Zeneca picked her up and carried her to his house. He couldn't leave a stranger in distress alone in the forest. It was a strange twist of fate. Considering he had experienced a similar loss himself. He had no medical training. But he did his best to help her through the difficult labor. In the end, with his support. The young woman gave birth to a tiny, crying baby girl. Exhausted but relieved. Zeneca and the woman shared a moment of gratitude. She expressed her deep appreciation for his help. And revealed that she was fleeing an abusive relationship. And had been hiding in a women's shelter. She asked if she could find temporary refuge with him. And he agreed. Why don't we name her Lyra Valeryevna? Zeneca suggested. The woman agreed surprisingly quickly. Zeneca learned her story, how she had escaped from her abusive husband sought refuge in a shelter, and ended up in the forest. Zeneca's heart went out to her. And he offered her a safe haven. From that moment on, their lives became intertwined. Zeneca took on the role of a protector. 
and Lyra Valeryevna became like a daughter to him. Their shared experiences and their connection to the forest brought them closer together, forging a bond that would shape both of their lives in unexpected ways. This is narrated from the perspective of a ranger. I was a ranger in those years, I was a happy person. I was doing what I loved. I lived where I was surrounded by nature. On my territory I have a large winter dwelling consisting of three smaller houses. I also have three wonderful husky dogs helping me. One day, while I was driving around my territory, I saw a wolf in the distance. Obviously, he is very old. I knew this immediately because he barely moved his paw. I stood for a few minutes, yelling at him. The wolf took one look at me, then turned and limped off in the opposite direction. Watching him, I feel like he's running out of time. It was obvious that he could no longer hunt. A few days passed, and fate decided to connect me with the old wolf again. I take my dog for a walk along the forest. Suddenly, they ran into a snowy canyon. Here stands the wolf that I saw a few days ago. His body is weak, his eyes are looking around. He has come to the canyon in front of him. And he is ready to die here. I yelled loudly to calm my dog down. I came to this frail animal. Wolves showed no aggression at all. He doesn't care what happened to him anymore. If so, my friend. I will change your fate, and I will arrange your funeral. I tied the rope around his chest and dragged him home. I don't even know why I do it myself. Maybe I'm bored and want to do something out of the ordinary. But maybe I feel sorry for him. For two weeks I have been taking care of him. Feeding him and talking to him. Soon at night, the wolf was able to stand up. And he even started howling at my dog. I've made plans for him. He will be the guard of my winter cabin. And he will protect me from bears. But one morning when I went to the forest with him, he turned and ran into the forest. This is how he thanked me. I was very upset. But one thing happened in the evening and it was a big surprise for me. I was sitting by the stove when I heard a knock at the door. Thinking it was a colleague from a nearby property. And was surprised when I happily opened the door. In front of me was a young woman looking at me with her big eyes. And it seemed to me that she was thanking God that I was in the house. And I also saw my wolf beside her. As if you were ready to come in as usual. This is a gift of fate. Welcome in, miss, come in. As you can imagine, I brought them into the room. It turned out that she was walking along an ancient road from the village. But got lost. When she saw a wolf. She sank down in the snow ready to say goodbye to her life. But then he started dragging her here by her boots. Oh, how interesting fate is. I fell in love with that woman. And in the summer, we got married. And we started living together in the house for the winter. And the wolf lived in our yard. He won't live long, he's so old. But the way he brought us together was amazing. I still remember this so often. I still can't believe it. What happened? This is a hit story. My husband Anton and I decided to do a project to make some money. Since I graduated from economics. I have several ideas and projects that. I want to implement in the field and my husband is very supportive. After raising the right amount. Anton and I purchased a piece of land near the highway outside the city. In addition. We built a huge store that sells wheels for cars and trucks while doing repairs. The project was a flop at first. But things started to improve over time. One day a man with a truck came and parked in the garage. Where my husband and I were working because his truck tire needed repairing. Also, when my husband noticed a nice. Big cat in the man's truck. The man got in the truck, picked the cat up. Held it in his hand and started telling Anton about the animal story. The driver said, a few years ago, 
I lived in a beautiful small village and enjoyed life with my friends. I met a beautiful young woman in the village and married her. But our relationship only lasted a year. Because my wife decided to abandon me and immigrate to the city. This made me very disappointed and started looking for a job away from that village as I couldn't bear to stay in that village anymore. I got a job with a company as a truck driver transporting goods. And I've been working ever since. I drove the truck back to my house and parked it on the side of the road to sleep. My work requires long distances. So I used to spend all my time on the road between big forests and stunning nature. One day, on my way to Vladivostok, the truck pulled over and I got out to relax in the woods. Suddenly, I heard a strong noise coming from the forest. So I decided to get closer to find its source. There I found a kitten, less than two months old, standing in place and imitates. Then I realized that he was lost after his mother and inevitably needed help because he was hungry and would die in the in that forest. I found the veterinarian in the first city on the way and gave him the baby lynx. When I confirmed her injuries with the vet, he told me it was a female. She was malnourished and I had to stay with her for a few days and feed her well until she was fully recovered. As the days passed, the lynx began to recover and began eating voraciously. When it sits near me, it plays and shares food with me. It sits next to me watching the road when I drive the truck. I'm thinking about putting it back in the wild. But I think she'd be happy with me. That's why I decided to keep it and not let it go anywhere. Unless I realized it wanted to go back to the forest. This lynx, which I called Marini started to grow and become huge. Its fangs clearly visible. It didn't bother me because I knew she wouldn't want to hurt me. She will be my faithful guardian wherever I go. She accompanied me everywhere I went by truck. From Kaliningrad to Sochi to Vladivostok. We call our truck our home and spend most of our time in it. I forgot about my friends and the ex who dumped me. Marini is very smart, she moves according to her needs. And she has her own signals when she wants to poo. When she's hungry, she also makes another move. And that got me used to it. And I started to understand all the suggestions she was making. I used to buy Lynx all the food she likes like meat, milk etc. She likes to sleep next to me. Sometimes close to me, on my lap so I can touch her. I notice that Marini often interacts with classic Russian songs. She is completely at peace when she hears it. And sometimes even falls asleep to the music. This Lynx has helped me several times. Once, it saved me from a villain trying to get in my way. She also attacked a drunk man who tried to attack me with a knife. Those things made me attach to it even more. And promise myself that I would never let it go no matter what. This cat lived with me for 20 full years. During which time I had some of the best years of my life. She is like a friend and partner. She was never afraid of my words and acted aggressive towards me. Well, she is very aggressive with everyone. Who tries to get close to me or shows hostility towards me. But Marini was getting old and starting to be less active. She liked to sleep and refused to get out of the car too much. Because she only goes out when I tell her to do so. I feel like she's about to leave this life because like cats. Most of these animals have a maximum age of 15 to 20. When I look at her, I feel sad because I can't imagine life without her. So I felt sympathy for her. Because I knew I would miss her terribly when she wasn't around. Lynx also realizes that he is about to leave this world. So thinking about leaving her an heir because she didn't want me to be alone. And that's what was about to happen. And it shocked me. One day, to rest and feed her. I stopped in a forest and Marini got out. She jumped out of the truck and flew into the jungle. Which surprised me because it was the first time. She had gone out without my permission. I thought she wanted to die in the woods. 
but I didn't want to say goodbye like this. I waited for her until she disappeared completely in the woods. And I caught up with her. But I haven't found her yet. She returned two hours later and slept next to the truck. I wanted to continue my journey and let her get in the car. But she refused and went back into the middle of the woods. That's when she realized she was doing something there. Marini came back again. Gripped my pants with his teeth. And started pulling them forward. Then I realized she wanted to take me somewhere and show me something. I followed her into the woods. And after walking for more than half an hour. She suddenly stopped in front of a big cardboard box and kept looking inside. I went up to the box and looked inside and found three kittens. Two were dead and the third was in critical condition. And was having difficulty breathing. I immediately realized that it was a human being who had done this. Dehumanized. He took those kittens to that place and discarded them. I dug a small hole and buried the two kittens. As for their third brother. I held it in my hand and quickly returned to the place. Where the goods were delivered. Worrying that his marini would also follow. When we got to the truck. I found some milk in there that I sometimes feed the marini. I fed it to the kitten. Then keep checking and give him water to drink. As time went on. The kitten began to improve and became active again. To my delight, the lynx approached the kitten like it was her real mother. Marini has been taking care of the kitten and playing with it all the time. She asked me to give the kittens milk and water. She wants to keep a cat to replace her. Because she doesn't want me to be left alone. I took care of the cat, bought him all the necessities. And put him to sleep with the lynx. As time passed. Marini's condition deteriorated and I took her to the vet. And gave her medication. But to no avail, and she passed away. I couldn't drive my truck that day and kept crying. The kitten would come and sit next to me, as if to comfort me. He was sad too, knowing that Marini no longer existed. The cat stayed with me in the truck. He is now a year old. The driver then started petting the cat. Anton begged the driver to hold the cat in his hands. And he hugged the kitten because he loved it so much. When Anton heard his story. He fell in love with the loyal lynx. When he fixed the wheel, the driver left. At this point he immediately told me that. He had to bring a cat to live with us right away. After hearing the story of the beautiful cat. My husband would often spend time with the cat. When a group of Estonians rescued a poor dog trapped in an icy river, they got more than they bargained for. Although they thought they were just helping a dog in trouble, they actually rescued something more than just a dog. A group of construction workers were on their mission to repair the Sindhi Dam on the Panu River. The task would be long and arduous, made worse by the weather in that part of Estonia. Temperatures here were often below freezing, snow often fell for hours. And ice quickly built up and froze in the most inconvenient and destructive places. In fact, it was this ice that caused the damage to the dam in the first place. Construction workers had to wear several layers of thick clothing every day because keeping warm was crucial and if they got too cold then they may make mistakes on the job. Because the cold could cause their hands to tremble unsteadily. And the consequences of making a mistake could be catastrophic. If they fell into the icy water below, their chances of survival were slim. The water was just a thin layer of ice, the current was swift, and it was still moving fast enough that they would be swept away in an instant. These dangerous conditions reminded the workers that they had to be careful and alert. They got to work. They slowly dug down the side of the dam and assessed the damage on the eroded walls, but that's when they noticed something in a shallow area of the river below. It was a small animal trapped in the icy water, and despite the shallowness of the water, it appeared to be struggling. It needed urgent help. It kept struggling in a panic, trying to free itself. 
but the icy water kept splashing against it, crushing it to the ground. To make matters worse. It had started to snow here and the wind was picking up. In this one terrible combination of weather, the temperature was gradually dropping, and if they wanted to save this animal, whatever it was, they needed to act now, and they needed to act fast. Thinking back to the moment they found the animal, one of the workers said, we could see this tiny animal and at first we thought it was just a log or a bit of trash in the water, but it kept moving so we looked a little closer and we could see the shape of a four-legged animal. Amani thought it was a deer or an elk, but we were so far out of reach that we couldn't even get close to it. In fact, when we finally got there, no one could believe what we were seeing. The construction workers quickly dropped their work to the river, where they hoped to rescue the animals before they froze to death or were swept away by the powerful tide. As the men approached, their eyes widened. They felt a sad unease as they realized that the animal in the river was actually a dog. Its fur was covered with snow and ice. And it was shivering violently due to the cold wind. The poor animal was in a miserable state, and the men waded into the water with almost nothing for their own safety. Finally they scooped up the dog. And the poor thing was so tired that it didn't even flinch or try to run away when the men picked it up. They had brought a heat blanket with them and they wrapped it around the poor animal to try to dry it out and get it warm. The men put it in the car and took it to a nearby veterinary clinic hoping the vet would check the dog out and make sure it was going to be okay. All the construction workers were dog lovers and they all had pets, so they didn't want to see a dog die in such a horrible way, it would have been terrible. One of the workers recalled the car ride and said, We had to carry it across the ramp, it was quite heavy, but it was calm. It slept on my lap and when I tried to stretch, it lifted its head up for a moment and then lowered it again. It's a really good boy, it's just in bad shape. They arrived at the veterinary office and the doctor started checking all the animal's vital signs. The veterinarian from the Estonian Animal Protection League said that when it arrived at the office, its blood pressure was low, which explained its quietness and caution. And the men carried it to their car to warm it up, if it had been at the right temperature it would have probably been more violent and could have run away. It had several injuries on its body and needed urgent treatment. But fortunately, the construction workers brought it to the clinic in time to be treated before any infection could occur. And the ice had frozen the wounds, which also helped keep it from getting infected. Fortunately, the vet was able to treat it and he was able to patch up the wound before it got any worse. If it had been in the water for 10 or 15 minutes longer, it probably would not have survived. Now it is important for us all to remember that a person or animal can survive 15 to 45 minutes in cold water. If they are weaker, then the amount of time they can survive will be greatly reduced. If they are stronger, they can survive for more time. Then the blood will start to freeze in the veins and the heart will go through a difficult moment where it will try to beat, but soon the heart and brain will give up completely. So the vets had to make sure their four-legged patient hadn't suffered any major damage and specifically had to check its heart and brain for any abnormal activity. Fortunately it did not seem to have suffered any permanent damage. Time was of the essence when treating the animal, which had been submerged in cold water for a long time. One of the veterinarians who treated it said it was important to maintain a normal temperature if you want to save its brain and heart so it could resume normal blood flow. Without that, it's fatal. When it was out of danger, the clinic's veterinarians finally had a chance to take a good look at it. It was a big dog, with broad shoulders and sharp teeth. Its fur was thick and it looked like it had never been washed. It had probably lived on the streets its whole life. 
But soon they found out that the big dog had never had contact with people before that day. In the meantime, they had started looking for a place for it to recover. When the construction workers inquired about the dog a few days later, they were told that they had not yet found a home for the dog. Apparently, it was not easy to find a place for this special good boy to live. The news surprised the men, who thought how could anyone not want to take in such a sweet animal. One worker even offered to foster the new dog. Someone stood up for their new friend and the vet strongly suggested that we couldn't do that, which confused the construction workers even more. The vet said that if you have the courage to touch that animal without perfect protective gear, you do so at your own peril. Seriously though. I assure you, it was really a bad idea to bring this puppy home. The construction worker replied that the dog was so tired that it wouldn't attack them. That's when the vet told him exactly what the beast was that they were petting like a puppy. In fact, the animal was not a dog at all, but a wolf. The two species have a common ancestor and from a distance some dogs can be mistaken for wolves, but that animal was definitely a wolf. It was very young, which explains why the construction workers thought it was just a dog, but that's also why it had a hard time finding a permanent home. Fortunately, a week later, nearby shelter that specializes in wolves received the news. This shelter would be able to take in the wolf and give it the proper care and attention it needs. Speaking about the wolf and its survival, a member of the Estonian League for the Protection of Animals said. We are very happy about the outcome of this story and thank all those involved from the bottom of our hearts, especially those who saved the wolf and the doctors at the clinic. Their courage in the face of nurturing and treating this wild animal is something we should learn from. What would you do if you found an animal in distress in an icy river? We're looking forward to hearing your thoughts, so be sure to leave your thoughts and comments in the comments section below.